joining me. We're going to put a clutch in the little Peugeot J9 today. It's a little bit unusual, the, the layout of it. The engine on this one is pointing longitudinal. It's front to back rather than being transverse um, with the, yeah. So it's going to be a bit awkward. We, But I think we can do it without actually taking the engine fully out. I think we can separate it. A bit like a Subaru, you can sometimes pull those apart and get the clutch in the gap. So that's what I'm thinking. We're gonna, yeah, pull it apart, slip a new clutch in, and hopefully it'll all be all right. Let's crack on, get it stripped down. So the other thing is, most of the work's gotta be done from the inside. Um, the engine is tucked away behind this cover. Just release that and get it, get it out of the way. We've got two clamps holding it, holding it closed. So like I was saying, the engine is front to back rather than being side to side, um, which means the gearbox, instead of being on the side, is underneath here. It's underneath the back. You can see the top of the bow housing. It's only held in by three main bolts. We've got one at the top and one either side. Starter motors on the side, that's got to come out. Um, I've labelled the wiring on it. The starter motor is, is an awkward little monkey. It's a tough one to get at. Um, as you can see there, the hardest bolts like these here, you, to get at the, the socket from there, you have to put a long extension from down the side of the gearbox from underneath and get it onto those. Um, starter motor itself, just got a few wires and a bracket at the bottom. So that's no great shakes. So we'll just move away some of these uh, ancillaries there. We've got the glow plug relay. We've got a fuel pipe that's gonna need disconnecting. Like I say, the wires from the starter motor. The alternator and this, this air pipe, we'll just pop that off. Alternator just needs to be swung back so it gives a little bit more room because it's quite tight against the side there. First of all, I've got to remove the bumper, um, which is just whipping that off. I'm not going to bore you with that. Then I'm just going to twist that little bleed there and drain down the cooling system. Once that's done, we're pretty much into here, um, which is removing the radiator. So that's the first job. We'll get that out of the way. Just undo those hose clips. Beautiful. Yeah, the old snap-on ratchet spanner, an absolute delight. Now these are a little bit stiff on this uh, radiator mounting. So I'll just pop a bit of rust off on there. Yeah, it's good stuff, the worth rust off. A little dip of that on both of those just to free those nuts off. We can taz them out of the way. We've got to take all this out the front because the engine has got to come forwards. So we're moving the radiator, the cross member, engine mounting, the fan. This is the air intake hose and these are the two water hoses for the heater. Three little 10 mil bolts holding the fan on. We'll have those out of the way there. We'll take that little grill out of the way as well. Now we can get at these hoses and just pull them through. This cross member here, this first one, is held on with four little bolts. Then we've got the exhaust manifold there. Just whiz those two out of the way, then that whole exhaust system will drop down. I've just got to take those two bolts off there on that mountain and then that will just drop straight out. Now down below here, we've got the clutch slave cylinder. That stays intact and in the gearbox. That doesn't need to be moved, but the plate behind it does need to come out. We've then got the starter motor. We've got that bracket there that's got to come away. And then three bolts holding the starter in. They are really fiddly to get at, but yeah, you've just got to work at them. The starter's big and tight. We've also got this plate on the other side, just two little 10 mil bolts there. And we've got three bell housing bolts, this being the last one. Uh, there's just one on the left, one on the right, and that one. Last bolt to get the subframe off, or the cross member at the front. <sighs> Moment of truth. So this cross member's held in with six 13 millimeter bolts, and they go through from the inside, through this cross member, picking it all together. So I've got the engine on three bits of wood and on the jack. <laughs> Um, hang in, hang in there. there come have a look. So you've got this cross member with engine mounts on it. 
we've got all the bolts on the bell housing we've took those off starter motors out the last engine mounting bolt there now I don't think this is the original engine from when the van was made I think this has been swapped out at some point they did quite a few variants 2 litre 2.3 2.5 um, and I think this has been changed because the bracket for me on the engine mounting looks like it's been fabricated a little bit uh, but it's had a really nice job done on it I have to say that it's, it's really really well made it looks lovely this front cross member is a bit fiddly at the bottom below the pulley below the uh, front pulley there is a, a, a mount in there that's holding it it's almost like um, it, to stop the engine twisting but it, it just, yeah, making things a little bit awkward to get that out. And the pipe's in the way a bit as well. We'll shift that out of the way. We should be able to just manipulate it out. That's the vacuum pipe for the servo there. That, that runs through that little bracket on the subframe. We just push that through. Let's give it a wiggle and see. See how it performs. Oh, it's coming. It's coming. It can't wait to come out. It's absolutely just look at that, straight out the hole. Oh, oh, oh yes. Oh you little beauty. That's just dropped off the spigot. You can see there, if you look behind the jack, I've got a little piece of wood on the bell housing just holding the gearbox so it doesn't move at all. So that's a perfect fit. Air lead off as well. And you can just see the air lead there to the right of the exhaust. It's just a 13 mil bolt. I didn't think I was going to have to, but looking at that, there's not a lot there. The other thing is the fuel lines, they're quite tight. And there you go, hanging now. Let's go inside and you can just see what we've done. Because we've separated that now, we can see the clutch and we can change that. And I can just get my knuckle bar in if I don't get stuck to my torch on the magnets. And uh, yeah, you've got some 6mm Allen key bolts there. I'll just give that a tap with the ammo and that will just crack them off. And so, we go on each one, we get on it. And then we just undo it. And then rotate the engine, do the next one, and so on. So we just keep undoing those bolts, rotate the flywheel around by hand, undo the next one until all the bolts are out. The engine turns quite easily on the flywheel by hand. Just rotate it around. Now this clutch has been slipping for the best part of six months getting worse uh, as, you know every week that goes by slightly but we've been really sort of nurturing it and uh, not putting full acceleration in third and fourth gear and it's lasted and lasted it's been really really good um, if you put it in fourth and put your foot to the floor in the accelerator it would slip but we, we've managed to nurture it like I say and just get every last bit of wear out of it Just need a bit more of a gap there. There goes the friction plates, just fell through the bottom. Not to worry about that though. If I just come around the front and grab hold of the engine and just pull it forward just a tiny bit more. There we go, just give me that extra couple of inches, she cried, and uh, here it comes straight out. Now you can see down the bottom there at the flywheel, it looks in good condition. It's got a tiny bit of scoring on it, but it's not, it's not too bad at all. We'll give that a clean, ready for the new clutch to go in. We'll get in and pull the release bearing out. That's on the clutch arm, the dreaded release bearing, I'll have to say, because when I came to put it back in just now, and it just, you have to pull the lever forward to slide that on. I'm really sorry I couldn't get the camera down there, but um, as you'll hear in a minute, the arm fell off, and what a nightmare to get that back on again. So the clutch arm is the thing here that is attached to the end of this slave cylinder. When you press the clutch, it pushes the arm out and it's on a pivot inside the gearbox on a little ball. And that's got a spring clip behind it. And that's what's just pinged off. And to get that back on again, you have to do it from underneath and feed it up. 
it was very tricky, I have to say. So here we go, we've got a comparison of the two kits. There's the old one, look, right down to the rivets. Here's a new one with plenty of material on it. Now there is a difference in the plates, in the pressure plate. We've got, that's the old one there. That's the new one there, so they look completely different. And if we just turn them upside down and match the two up, the only grace is that the, the actual holes line up on all of them. This is this Valio one has got far more ma more material on it than the other one, um, so it should work like a dream. Everything else is the same. And I've got my makeshift alignment tool, <laughs> which fits straight into the spigot there, perfectly. That part there fits inside the clutch plate, perfectly. So. All we've got to do is insert the whole thing in and then put it all together. So let's get this going on. You know it's going to be quite fiddly to get it down because we can't see a massive amount. It's really tight. There's not a lot of gap there. But we get those dowels lined up with those holes in the clutch plate and then we can just get a couple of bolts through just to hold it in place. We'll be uh, we'll be halfway there. Got to get the dowels lined up. And I'm really struggling to see it from where I am. I'm sort of uh, face down with my chest on top of the chair, and I'm really struggling to sort of get a decent view. I need to try and get a bit closer, but there's there's hardly any room around the front of the chair. It might have been better to have took the chair out. Maybe that would have given me a little bit more bit more room to see it, but. I'm battling on. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna get that lined up, and I'm. Uh, I'm gonna have sore nipples by the time I'm finished. <laughs> to be fair, the following day, my chest was bruised. It was. Um, it was really sore, and I was thinking, what on earth have I done to my chest? And it was this. It was lying on that chair. Um, yeah, just leaning over, all my body weight on my chest, trying to get this back in again. But you can see there it goes look that's just gone onto the dowels now so I just need to get a couple of bolts in about there, I think. yeah you're right you can see that just went oh, in yeah. nicely then take it in place with a couple of bolts and then we can be rest assured it ain't gonna fall down and hit the other plate on the floor yeah lovely Oh, right, now we can insert this makeshift tool. This is really, really important when you're putting a clutch in. You've got to be sure that the, the, the actual friction plate is trapped when you do the bolts up it traps it you gotta make sure it is smack bang in the center if not then you'll never get the gearbox main shaft through that it just won't go through it won't locate it goes right the way through the clutch plate and then the little the little bit on the end of the of the shaft sticks into the spigot bearing in the back of the flywheel so that's what this, this alignment tool is all about it's got to be smack bang in the middle otherwise you'll never get the gearbox back in it won't go all the way through so this okay. is now in. Bang in the middle. Yeah, beautiful. Now we can do the bolts up. I'm literally just doing these up finger tight for now. And I've just turned that flywheel and them teeth are really sharp and I've gone straight through this, this crappy glove. Shot. Yeah, I go for the Milwaukee thicker gloves. Saves my hands and uh, keeps everything nice and clean. Right, I'm just going to do them up one by one, working his way around. Right, 
So it's important to do these up a bit at a time and in opposites really. So if you can do one up then do the opposite one up to it and just keep working your way around, um, nipping them up a little bit at a time until you've got the whole lot done up nice and tight. You haven't got to go crazy tight with these but obviously they've got to be tight enough. And we're nearly there. Let's get that tool out if we can. See how stuck it is. Come on, baby. Come on. Oh, there we go. Oh. <laughs> Beautiful. Time to get it back in. So I'll go back around the front of the van and start shoving the engine back in. Just keep uh, wiggling it, wiggling it, pushing it. Just trying to get it all lined up. And it's it's gone in so far, and it's going to get stuck on the spigot. They they always are a bit. That's the last bit. It's just getting it through that last bit, that last bit of that spigot into the bearing, and um, I've just wiggling and shoving and pushing and wiggling and shoving and pushing, <laughs> and it's nearly there. Look, it's so close. It's just on the spigot now, just to that last that last bit. Can we get it in? It's it's really tight. Look on the last bit. I might just have to lift the gearbox up a tad or the engine slightly, maybe the jack's just dropped a little bit. It's really close. If I can just get that bolt started, I can take some of the load on it and then give everything a shake and it should just pull itself in. That's what I'm hoping. That's what I'm hoping. If I just get it close enough to get a, get a thread in. I might just have to pop the washer off that bolt just to give me another couple of millimetres. Oh, that looks better. It's nearly there. It's nearly there. <laughs> oh, that looks better. Oh, that's moving now. That's so close. It's really close. Oh, come on. Oops. Another loads of shakes and wiggles and it's just gone a little bit there it's just moved a tad more we'll just jack it up again give it a good wiggle and there we go there we go just started on the bolt just i just keep taking a bit up taking a thread at a time giving it a wiggle letting it sort of work its way onto the plate yeah nice and slow we don't want to pull any threads out but we just want it to work its way in nice and gently i'm hardly putting any effort into this i'm not like winding it on with any any great effort so I know things are, are going where they need to be and as soon as it moves along a little bit the ratchet becomes lighter as you can see a little shape the, the the ratchet comes lighter I go a bit more until it's all the way home I'm in no rush at this point we can just gently gently get it up nice and slowly there we go look lovely <laughs> yeah, come on, baby. It's in. It's in, look. What a relief. I'll put that washer back on so there we go washers on and now we can wind that all the way up yeah it's back in okay let's piece it all back together again but it is back in its old wonderful stuff wonderful so everything goes back in reverse order. Like I say, the slave cylinder stays there. We'll put the plate on behind. We'll get the starter motor back in from underneath. It goes up through that little gap. We've got the other plate the other side and then exhaust and everything that else. Fun and games. We had a, well, it was a reasonable job. It wasn't, it wasn't too bad. Struggled with the clutch arm with the clip at the back where it comes through and it pivots. There's a little retainer clip that goes behind it had to do that from underneath uh, with a screwdriver to try and put it on. I couldn't get the clip on the on the phone. Missed that. Really sorry. But that was the tricky part. It's just getting that that release bearing. Um, yeah, it was a trick on the on the fork. Was really really tricky. Um, 
But other than that, it all went quite smoothly. We didn't have to take the engine all the way out. We managed to pull it forward a tad. Everything's back together again. And it works like a charm. Absolutely beautiful. The clutch slave cylinder just stays in place. We don't need to move that at all. Um, so that saves any messing about with that because the gearbox is staying in place. We're not having to take any of the drive shafts out. <laughs> all in all, not a bad job. Took a day, so it was a full day to do it. Let's get this cover back in. Good as gold. <laughs> if you've enjoyed that one, drop me a little thumbs up, like, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Hey.